Hello and welcome to the latest episode of The Insider, a show designed to clue you into the biggest news, events and announcements in the video games industry, discussing with you the things that you know, things you don't, and the glue that holds it all together is a little bit of my own opinion. My name is Paul James, thank you very much for watching and let's jump into another episode. So Super Mario Odyssey was without doubt one of the biggest games of E3 2017. Uh, it's like the next Mario game, the next 3D Mario game is always a big deal. And at E3 2017, Nintendo blew the doors off uh, the, the event with a trailer with several gameplay demos and a range of other different bits and pieces. All that wowed and impressed the audience. There was a lot to dissect from this. We got a trailer, we got several gameplay demos courtesy of the Nintendo Treehouse feature that they have running through E3. There was a lot to take out of it, and I've picked five different things that are really important that I think everyone should know if they don't already, so let's talk, discuss those now. So the first thing we need to discuss today is Cappy. Cappy is a hat who basically takes possession of Mario's own red iconic hat and in turn allows Mario to then possess other objects, both animate and inanimate, um, within the world of Super Mario Odyssey. This means that Mario can take control of a taxi, but he can also possess Goombas or other enemies in the game that he can then use and leverage to his advantage that allow him to make progression within each world or which, within each level. The, the important thing about this is that each of these different enemies or objects have their own different strengths and weaknesses and that can allow Mario to potentially reach areas that he may not otherwise have been able to access. One that really struck me was uh, the fact that he took over uh, at one point this Incan totem sort of creature who for some reason had glasses and when he flicked, uh, when he flicked down the glasses, having already possessed them, it revealed a path that Mario otherwise would not have been able to see. So if you instantly you take that, cool, that knowledge is awesome. I'm gonna jump out as Mario and run along that path. That allows you to then get to a, a hidden moon. They're moons, not uh, not stars in this particular one, not shine sprites, moons. Don't know why it. Um, but uh, basically that, you know, that is one example of the several different ways that possessing different enemies or items or objects in the game will create new options for you as the player. Second point for the day, in spite of Cappy being added, what pleased me most out of this particular uh, E3 demo was the fact that the core 3D aspect of a Mario game has still remained intact despite Cappy's inclusion. There is still plenty of running, jumping, hop, skip and jump, plenty of triple jumps, backflips, all the usual stuff that we come to expect from a 3D Mario game. It's all here in the case of Super Mario Odyssey. You can, uh, look, there's, there's alternative ways to reach paths, but the tried and true still remains and I've seen plenty of demos, I'm seeing people climbing to the highest points in New Donk City, jumping off, hitting the ground, no fall damage, all those sorts of things. It's all fine. It's all there. Be rest assured, everything's going to be okay. Here we go, off the rails, but you know it's time to raise our sails. Third point for the day is the fact that we've got some Mario A Link Between Worlds sort of style go uh, stuff going on here. Yeah, we know that uh, The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds came out for the 3DS a few years ago and one of, the, one of the main hooks in that particular game was the fact that Link could kind of jump into the wall and he was like art on the wall and he navigated that to get to in previously inaccessible areas. Looks like they're leveraging the same sort of... Um, I wouldn't go as far as call it a gimmick, but the same aspect of that game, they're leveraging the same thing again in Super Mario Odyssey. There's only a very brief little sequence that they show in the trailer, but you do see Mario and it becomes a very 8-bit style uh, scene here. But you do see him jump into the wall and then starts to traverse it, wrapping around what, look, what looks to be a tower of sorts. I assume there'd be plenty more opportunities to do this, but it's a cool little inclusion they've added into this game. The fourth point for today is the fact that exploration pays off. Much like in Super Mario 64 and Sunshine that came afterwards, not so much like Galaxy, which was a far more linear experience, the opportunity is going to be there to go and explore the world and see what there is. And you're going to find hidden moons, you're going to find hidden objects, you're going to find little Easter eggs tucked away within the game. It's a really cool aspect that they're bringing back to this uh, to the 3D Mario platformers as a result of uh, as a result of this game. It's something that I'm sure we'll see massive dividends for. Go out, explore the world, look in every little corner because there's going to be something awesome there. I can't wait.
My fifth and final point for today is the fact that it's a really dense world that you've got to explore. There is so much to do. Case in point, New Donk City. I've seen clips of people just wandering through, exploring, going and collecting moons as their normal business, completing that main objective, and all of a sudden they see a couple of girls or a couple of children um, skipping, and Mario can just join in. And like people are, there's there's documented. Oh, I got this many. I got this many. I got this many. Don't know if there's a reward for a moon at the end of it. Um, I'm sure there probably is because why not? But the thing that is most impressive about this is that there's not just the, okay, here's your five or six or seven or whatever, however many it is, moons that you've got to collect in this particular world. There's all these other little things that you could just happen upon because you're digging around and you're exploring the world and you, you come across something cool that you can engage with. It kind of links to my previous point. But not only do we have, you know, hidden things in little corners, but we've also got in plain sight these really cool little side objectives that are going to be great fun to play. So those were the five things that I observed from what we saw at Super Mario Odyssey at E3 2017. There's plenty of questions that we've still got. There's plenty of things that we're sure Nintendo's going to answer. But the coolest thing about it is we're not going to have to wait long for all those answers. Super Mario Odyssey comes out October 27th to the Switch. So please, if you're interested, make sure to go and pre-order or buy it when the game comes out. So that ends another episode of The Insider for yet another week. It's not the only show though you can view at Player 2. Please make sure to like, share and subscribe to this channel where you can catch up with weekly episodes of Patched, the Player 2 Video Games Club. There's Player 2 Plays episodes that come up weekly uh, that just explore a range of different games you'll see from Matt and Ken and several others that participate in those. Uh, in the meantime, please make sure to visit player2.net.au for the website where you can find all the awesome written content. Player 2 AU on Twitter. You can find me at PaulJamesP2 on Twitter. And for another week, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later.